uh, this possibility. This is mostly, a, let's say, curiosity-driven study, quite preliminary about intercomparing uh, uh, reanalysis and objective analysis. Um, and basically, the main motivation is about uh, the monitoring of oceanic content, which is a fundamental uh, climate change uh, parameter. There exist several uh, observing networks in situ or satellite and tools from reanalysis to objective analysis, and since recently also uh, deep learning and green function based reconstruction. However, there is still large uncertainty uh, before the Argo. Uh, era and uh, below 2,000 meters. So, uh, one uh, very widely used method is objective analysis, uh, which is basically statistically mapping of observation. Uh, is uh, uh, quite uh, the, 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 the tools that is mostly used in high-level reports like IPCC and State of the Climate, uh, which basically uh, statistically map the observation using a definition of background and some error covariance characterization like any data simulation system. On the right, you see that the different grid method provide a, a different realization of oceanic content. And it's um, another uh, way, obvious uh, uh, for this audience to, to estimate oceanic content is through uh, reanalysis, which use uh, instead an ocean general circulation model to propagate the analysis uh, along the analyzed period. They are fully multivariate system. Uh, the analysis scheme can be, in principle, similar to that of uh, objective analysis. And the uh, reanalysis are, in general, able to reproduce climate pattern. You see on the right side two panels of uh, historical oceanic content re reconstruction from an ensemble of historical reanalysis in black. Objective, uh, 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 objective analysis in, uh, in red and the green function based reconstruction in blue. And on the bottom, you also can see the CMIP6 uh, uh, ensemble mean. Now you can see that beside the, the CMIP6, uh, which uh, is quite uh, uh, flat uh, by construction, uh, the other can uh, capture the low frequency variability, uh, but not much the interannual, uh, the subdecadal uh, one. So, <clears throat> sorry, just a speculation, if we want to compare uh, reanalysis and objective analysis, the reanalysis provide a consistent uh, for dimensional picture of the, of the ocean state for process budget uh, analysis, but they are possibly affected by biases and drift uh, of the model. And this spurious, uh, eventually spurious analysis increment may propagate in time. On the contrary, objective analysis are quite robust uh, uh, for in case of spurious analysis increments that cannot uh, um, directly propagate in time, but are possibly affected by the observation scarcity for which the choice of background becomes critical. And they provide, of course, a limited picture of the climate. So if you uh, look uh, at this time series of uh, uh, oceanic content anomaly in the southern uh, ocean, south of 30 south, basically. Uh, you see a control run in red uh, from Nemo model, a reanalysis light blue and two objective analysis in dark blue. And you can see that trend, but also interannual variability, which is here defined as the 10 year pass filtered uh, standard deviation is quite different. So. Key scientific question are, are these two methods consistent? Uh, is the stronger interannual variability, which uh, has uh, been seen in literature in reanalysis, uh, uh, spurious or real? And is the modeling component uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the reanalysis able to recover to some extent uh, the uh, observational uh, undersampling? And this, uh, I think, is also important to know because the uh, probably for this community is quite obvious, but in general, uh, considering the efforts and the computational uh, demand of reanalysis compared to statistical mapping, it's important to understand the relative uh, merits. So what we did is to use a, 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 what I would call a large-scale reanalysis system, uh, about one degree uh, model resolution with 75 uh, levels based on the late, not the latest actually, the NEMO uh, 4.0 uh, model, the ERA-5 atmospheric reanalysis, 
plus an, a few other details. And this is using the reanalysis realization for the period from 58 to 2021. The simulation component, which is the same in, in objective analysis and reanalysis in this study, uh, it's based on three-dimensional variational assimilation with a 10-day assimilation window a frequency, uh, direct initialization and uh, uh, background error covariances modeled through uh, multivariate UF and recursive filter. In both cases, uh, the um, observational source is the UK Met Office EM4 uh, dataset. So the key feature, I, I don't have time to go into the details of the definition of background error covariances, but uh, you can see some picture for winter, summer time of uh, on, from the left to the right, uh, uh, correlation scale at the surface, uh, uh, vertical correlation between surface and 100 meter of depth and standard deviation of temperature. But uh, uh, the main point here is that the key feature is that the calculation of the ground error covariances uh, is, uh, is performed uh, from the data set of anomalies uh, with respect to long-term means. Uh, so it's basically independent from the definition of the background field, uh, but only reflect the, the natural variability of the, of the ocean. Uh, how do we compare analysis objective analysis? As I mentioned, the, the data simulation system is a 3D var and is basically the same. What, what indeed uh, it changes is the definition of, be, of the background field uh, in their analysis, of course, taken from a, a, a a model integration, so from a, a previous uh, model uh, forecast step, while in the objective analysis can be, in general, according to available data set and to literature, formulated in different ways. Uh, in particular, we consider five uh, And Andra, I think we lost your voice. Can anyone hear Andra? Nope, I, I, I cannot hear him either. Andra, could you check if you're not muted by accident? Finally, it's taken from oh. a, an ensemble model uh, simulation. Uh, in this case, it's uh, kind of mimicking uh, offline data simulation, which is uh, uh, quite popular for paleoclimate uh, reconstruction. Uh, in here, I summarize a few results with uh, these slides. Uh, here, you see the time series uh, of the ocean uh, content globally average for the uh, control simulation, so NEMO model without the data simulation, error analysis in uh, light blue, and the five uh, uh, realization of the objective analysis with the different uh, definition of the background. Uh, you can see that uh, the, uh, the, uh, what they call the OA5, so with the background from simulation, is uh, quite uh, affected by the background uh, until the uh, Argo era. Uh, another realization, OA3, where the, the, the background is from climatology, is basically um, uh, provides a very small variability. Uh, OA2 uh, reanalysis tend to overestimate the recent warming because of the artificial cumulative effect of the, of the tendency, while other two are uh, quite consistent with the reanalysis. In particular, in the table, uh, uh, we added the, the trend and the interannual variability, as I defined before, and correlation with reanalysis. So you can see that actually the main point here is that. Uh, the, 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 the somehow uh, large variability that you can find at sub-decadal scale in reanalysis is not an artifact of the reanalysis, but is visible also in objective analysis. And uh, if you look at the uh, same uh, statistics in the southern extratropics, so south of 30 uh, south or northern extratropics, north of 30 nord, you can see that uh, the observational sampling, uh, the observational undersampling in this case in the Southern Ocean tend to amplify uh, the feature that I just uh, mentioned. <clears throat> so, but what about uh, uh, using uh, some synthetic profiles to verify? Uh, that's what we, we start to do using uh, the SMWF reanalysis or S5. Uh, um, uh, interpolated onto the uh, EN4 profile, 
uh, and they are assimilated. This is a typical uh, OS methodology, so so that we can compare the results with uh, uh, with the reanalysis, which here represent the truth. Uh, just a caveat, uh, because our analysis system is quite different from this uh, um, SMWF analysis. Although, of course, there are some uh, some uh, some features that are kind of close. The, the the model is the same, a different version, different uh, schemes, different resolution. The forcing uh, is uh, era 40 and era, era interim, sorry, against era 5, but still it's, uh, I would say, the same family. And the assimilation is different, but uh, again, it's a variational scheme. So just uh, to summarize the, the main outcomes from uh, this uh, result, comparing again the truth uh, with the control uh, simulation uh, and the reanalysis and the five objective reanalysis, we see that uh, actually the reanalysis uh, follows quite well um, uh, the truth before the Argo era, then they start to diverge, uh, but still it's the most the best performing uh, uh, result. Uh, the interannual correlation that you can see here uh, on the top right side uh, show that uh, uh, there is very close consistency almost everywhere, uh, except in, uh, in the, in the Kurosha extension in the Southern Ocean. And uh, quite interesting, uh, if we compare the, if we see for the two best performing objective uh, analysis, the, the difference of correlation between uh, versus the truth, between the reanalysis and objective analysis, we see that the reanalysis clearly outperform the objective analysis in the tropics and the Arctic, suggesting that uh, uh, dyna uh, tro tropical dynamics uh, um, captured by the in the analysis through the atmospheric forcing uh, really make this uh, this tool uh, more uh, uh, more effective. Uh, so to summarize, uh, we this is kind of a preliminary result about fair as fair as possible, I would say, comparison of uh, reanalysis objective analysis. Uh, there is a consistency for depending on the definition of the two product. Uh, however, the two main finding is that uh, the usual increased variability of or reanalysis not in artifact and the, in the in the in some uh, depending on the dynamical uh, regime the reanalysis clearly outperform the objective analysis. We will continue this work while assimilating a synthetic uh, profile from external objective analysis. And uh, I thank you for the attention and I will take questions. Thanks. Oh, thank, thank you, Andrea. We are a bit ahead of time now, right. but uh, I have a quick question for you. So are you aware of any research work, let's say in the atmosphere, comparing objective analysis and reanalysis like you have done in the ocean or is, is it really new what you, what you propose? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I don't know. I have to say that uh, uh, quickly that uh, like the high level report I mentioned, they already use atmospheric reanalysis, but they tend to use uh, uh, objective analysis, sorry, uh, atmospheric reanalysis for atmospheric uh, uh, diagnostics while, uh, while objective analysis in the ocean. So probably it's uh, my feeling that uh, this kind of things are needed more in the ocean community than in the atmospheric one. Mm -hmm. One quick question from Hao. Uh, could the heat content anomaly trend be dominated by the same observation data sets used in this study? Uh, yes, oh, oh, I mean, the, the observational data set is exactly the same. So in principle, the, the comparison really aims at, uh, at looking at what the methodology itself uh, could lead in terms of long term trend. Because it's not so straightforward to evaluate, uh, but uh, the, the observations are basically the same. So that, that they shouldn't be, in principle, uh, they are the same. It's, it's difficult to disentangle uh, all the effect. But uh... mm -hmm. there's one more question in YoPad, but I would invite you to address it there in the interest of time. And now let's move on to the next talk by 